I think we can all agree Dragon's Dogma 2 is missing a certain amount of... I feel like a boulder's gonna land and chase us down this spiral slope. I'm sure it will. Oh, what is that? 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 This, what is this that? looks very familiar. The, the area looks familiar. At what least, is that? What, what is, is that? Eye. It is, in fact, just a big eye. Ah, oh, oh, he's got a mouth. It's a mouth eye. He's got teeth. Yeah, it's a mouth yeah, with an eye in the it middle. It like it was also eating. That's not good. You know? Hello, my fellow Arisen. Today, I want to talk big boss beasties to beat brilliantly. Yes, there is a lot in a Dragon's Dogma 2, though I think it's no secret that there perhaps is not enough. And what is there is also perhaps not challenging enough. And while there is plenty to explore there, it is the former of those two problems I want to address today as we talk a, a selection of potential monsters that will, or at least likely will, or at least will make sense to appear, show up in a future expansion DLC, Dragon's Dogma 2, Darker Arisena. And what is my basis for this, apart from just flights of fancy? Look at this, look at this face! Look at this old man angry teeth face! You wanna know what that's attached to? We'll get to that! In any case, I uh, recently had a little look at all of the hints in game towards an expansion, and there is actually quite a lot. In fact, both location and enemies that might be in it, it's looking promising. The groundwork is there, and coupled with the success of Dragon's Dogma 2, it seems a sort of slam dunk. We have loading screens that uh, give us uh, something like the Hydra. It's still technically represented in game, along with like the Hydra bow. So clearly it's still a thing. We just didn't get to fight one, which is a shame. But we also have this big important little tidbit from this tapestry loading screen talking about a land to the north, an ancient nation that resides there and in the background, well, a battle is taking place twixt something serpent-esque that we'll also get to, and uh, this clearly ancient race that it's talking about, savage, efficient, spears, shields, presenting their successful kill to uh, their king and or chief. And that actual serpent they're killing is a Lindworm from Dragon's Dogma Online. And indeed, there's actually a few parallels from Dragon's Dogma Online in Dragon's Dogma 2, and it gives us a really good basis to start looking for what we might get. Dragon's Dogma Online was essentially created as a sort of stopgap to uh, bide time until Dragon's Dogma 2 really got going in development, and while it has sadly shut down, I think it's clear clear the market has left is definitely still thriving. Hell, the Sphinx initially appeared in Dragon's Dogma Online, and while it certainly has taken on a different look, the core of it existing in the world of Dragon's Dogma first originated there, and has clearly been translated into its Dragon's Dogma 2 incarnation. So with that all said then, what are we thinking? Well, let's talk about five enemies that I think would be both perfect and make sense for a given expansion, and perhaps with this northern territory in mind, home to the Hyperborean race uh, that it's talking about, as there's various mentions to that too. Let's begin with a clustered entry here that's just all of the big boys from Dragon's Dogma 1 that we didn't get, or at least the three main ones, which to me is your Cockatrice, your Evil Eye, and your Hydra. I don't think I have to go into too much detail here to get a resounding, yep, agreed, they're the ones, whack them in, all right, lovely, from everyone who has played it, and if you haven't played it, I mean, uh, the uh, chicken monster that turns you to stone, pretty badass fight, the literal classic magic spellcasting eyeball that you might be more familiar with from perhaps D&D settings, yeah, it is a phenomenal experience too, and then, yeah, the Hydra, the many heads, the cutting them off, and excellent encounter in the post-game of the first Dragon's Dogma. But I didn't want to just make three of five entries 
victories the three remaining big enemies from the first game. So let's move over to Dragon's Dogma Online and have a look. In at number four then, I said I would address that old man face, it's the Manticore, another classic from Greek mythology. And in this case, interpreted, well, as you are seeing it, the vicious tail, the claws, it would be a nice little addition and takes the general model of the Griffin of the Sphinx and is easily implementable because of that. It's a fiend uh, monster and uh, can uh, stun you, uh, it's got shrieks that pierce through, it can poison you, the classic venomous tail, and everything alongside it. The only issue is, technically, this probably would have been better as a Batali monster, it kind of fits uh, that theme a little bit more, and would have gone a long way to bulking out that area if it was introduced then. It's definitely the lowest of what I would like from uh, Dragon's Dogma Online, but I do think it is one of the more likely ones, because, yeah, there are some that are definitely, like, very cool, but I think are also likely to, uh, well, never get reused, because they're just a little bit too much. Or it's a unique one-time enemy like Damon from Bitter Black Isle, so it wouldn't make sense just kind of reappearing all over the place, especially narratively. That said then, we do have the Behemoth, a dragon of Earth, a giant tusked, boring dragonkin uh, that really knows how to hit hard. Imagine taking the Rattlosaurian and making a full-on boss out of it. I think this thing is absolutely badass, and I don't think there is enough variations on dragons, drakes, and those kind of things in Dragon's Dogma 2. We had, like, the Cursed Dragons and the Ur-Dragon in the first one, which were really, really neat, but entirely different forms of them, I think is something really worth exploring too. And I adore the dirty, great, big rock lizard vibe of it. I like that it's got no wings. I, I like that it has that more classic reptilian look and is only distantly related to a true uh, drake or lesser dragon as opposed to being a full one himself. Very powerful lumbering swipes of the tail, slams of his head, and an altogether ferocious fight that's incredibly hard to take down because he is so tough to to deal with. Seeing these guys roaming around would be lovely, and yeah, you could also totally see them in Batal, and I don't think it's impossible for any kind of expansion to sort of populate enemies into previous areas of the game that have been added in order to give it a little bit of a fresher feel if you go through it again. After the Behemoth then, well, uh, this one I think would be magnificent, the Gigant Machina. And these guys are giant flame-powered ancient suits of armor, though calling them more machine might be even more accurate, and they are just ferocious. They have two colossal weapons, and they really know how to use them. And the thing is, they belong to an entire category known as magical constructs, to which you will be familiar with the Golem and its various variations as members. But here we have other options, like the Geo Golem, which is a very more specifically lavery, magmary take on them, which we totally should have had in the Volcanic Island, and then the Frost version of the Gigant Machina that's powered by Eternal Ice as opposed to the Flame. But if we're exploring an ancient northern area that hasn't been seen or contacted in hundreds of years, the idea of these guys lying dormant, especially the Frost ones, if we do play with that hyperboreal super north theme and then them coming to life as you encounter them maybe as an automatic long-lasting defense mechanism or as something more deliberate or more intended I think would be phenomenal I think they're incredibly intimidating and you can see why they would be brutal to bring down because they are literal armor not just armored and the idea of that classic magic armor animated armor taken into dragon's dogma's 
way of doing things revived in Two Dragons Dogma 2, where everything is, let's be honest, so much better enemies-wise in how they work and look and fight, I think this one has got some serious potential. Massive smashes of fire and ice, respectively, and something you have to be really careful not to take a hit from, and I think it would really raise that danger level just a little bit, which is something the game desperately needs. Finally then, how could it not be the Lindworm? I did kind of want to throw in something like the Nightmare, which is just essentially a Sphinx but not a Sphinx, uh, and gives that model an extra sort of run out while not being literally the Sphinx, but that seemed kind of boring, so we've got to go with the most likely obvious, yet actually still my favourite choice, in the Lindworm. This is what our mystery people are fighting on the tapestry, and this is also a dragonkin. It is an electricity shock monster, and it lives in lakes and rivers and close to the shore and seas, emerging and doing carnage. And I think something focusing on electricity would be really neat. The Griffin occasionally does, a Drake will occasionally cast it, but we don't really have something super dedicated to it in that sense. And it also comes with gusts of water, beams of it, splashes on top of its charge, and it makes it kind of like the Namiel of the Dragon's Dogma 2 world, which I think is really fun. I love a enemy that combines to normal opposing elements like, you know, electricity and water, they tend not to mix too well, and then wields it in a ridiculous offense. It generates electricity from its wing-like fins above it. They're, of course, not used to uh, flying. Uh, they uh, power it, and then its powerful tail, size, and strength, the ambush nature of it, I think it really is uh, quite the fight, and having a full-on water dragon would be a really nice way to take us to the new area, especially if we are getting there by boat or overseas, like the tease with the old, crazy, exorism sailing off into the distance. Having a land that instead of having huge mountains just everywhere making travel hard, it's got lakes and rivers everywhere making travel hard, and then we can pull in a kind of aquatic touch, and these lindworms can be the stars of that. So, for me, that's kind of where we're at when it comes to enemies from DDO I would like to see that I think are actually realistic. Because, you know, there's lots that I would just objectively like to see, like the fucking giant black dragon death machine, but it's just kind of not going to happen anytime soon. So let me know what you think of my choices, let me know what you would choose, but for now, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.